Welcome to my one video about Python programming language. In this video, we are going to study how to integrate Python with MongoDB database. If you don't know how to program in Python or how to install and to use MongoDB, we have playlists at this channel explaining the basic steps with these technologies. The links are below at the description. In this video, basically, we are going to see how to hear from the Python programming language, we could then integrate in a MongoDB server and open a database, open a collection, and read documents from this collection, then retrieving data to the memory of the programming language, and then also send the data to insert or update or delete data directly in MongoDB database. So we are going to do in this video the famous crude operations. So this is a complete example about how to interact in from programming language and MongoDB database. Okay, MongoDB is a very famous uh, non-relational database or NoSQL with access uh, developers to handle a huge amount of data because no single SQL database are proper for this purpose. So it's very usable, very used actually. So our idea is to connect in this specific database, in this specific collection and retrieve this data. And basically we, we have to install this model in Python. So you have to use the pip to install the PyMongo, which is a model that will give us this Mongo client class. This Mongo client class makes all the work to make possible the interaction between Python and MongoDB server. The first step is to instantiate a object of Mongo client class, and we need to pass a connection e string. Normally, it has connected the IP of your server and the port which your MongoDB is listening to. This 27017 is the default port of MongoDB. In this case, we have no credentials because the default local installation for MongoDB would make it easier to perform connections in the development environment. Okay, you can see how easy it is to connect in one specific database and then in one specific collection. You can access that as a normal HBoot. So here is the Mongo client, and then we just use dot and the database name. We automatically has one instance to the database. And then once you have this reference to the database, we can access the collection also as one HBoot. And here we have the collection object. Pay attention here. This collection object is one of most important objects of this video because it contains important methods to allow these crude operations. This collection will have methods for inserting objects, create for reading objects, the find method for read, to update methods, and to delete. So everything is going to be done using this reference to one specific collection. So basically what we have here, we have the collection and then the first operation we're going to see here is the recovery. We are going to access this collection here and read these objects that are here available. So we have two options here. Or we use the find one that normally is going to access the first object of the collection. Here you can see that the code was executed. The find one, it access the collection and take the first object. The first object is exactly here. Okay, find one. So in some specific case, it could be useful, but very more useful than that is the find. Which needs to be parameterized. You can observe that the find one has no parameter, but the find has one parameter and this parameter is represents a very important concept that is the carry object. 
So we need to inform a JSON object as parameter that contains the criteria for selection. This carry object is like the SQL statement, the where clause, where we can inform the filters to retrieve the documents. Okay, so here is the carry object that will filter all documents in the collection that are here that match the informed carry criteria and then they are returned to to this variable that I have named here as result set. Okay, then we can loop through all documents. You can see it here, we are looping to all documents here in the find all method execute. Up here, it's just the find, the find one. I have filtered just the ones that the name is Raphael. That is exactly this first one. So just one single object as the first example as well. But if I want to find all documents, it's easier. It's just use the same find method, but with the empty carry object. So no criteria, it will return all documents of the collection. So we list here all documents that were here registered. No filter was employed. Okay, so we have seen how to retrieve data from one specific collection. We have done the recovery activity for the crude. But now we are going to do the next one. That's the create, the first letter for the crude. So we are going to use the insert one method for this purpose. And basically the insert one is very simple to use. It receives just one parameter. That is the object that's going to be inserted. So we, we define it here one object. We could use a, a object defined uh, anyway in the Python programming language or define the object directly with the JSON notation. Uh, and to allow us to test that we are going to print before the insert one how many documents there is in this collection and after the insert we are going to print also how many documents there is in this collection right so you can see here we have this method count documents that we can pass here a, a, select, a carry object and it will count how many objects will return from that so you can see here that before insert we have four objects and after the insert one method we have five. We have included one new object that was um, this object with these attributes. And more than that, after ins inserting one object, the database, if you observe the MongoDB collection, you can see that our object has one ID. This ID is generated automatically by the database. So we don't need to worry how to generate that manually. It's automatically generated. And if we need to insert one object and have a rather reference to its ID, it's very simple, very simple. The insert one method has a return object which has this inserted ID attribute. So the inserted ID can be recovered with this instruction. So you know already the, the inserted ID and you can use that to perform a following operation that needs to be performed after the insert but needs to have this ID for create some kind of relationships. Just pay attention here because we are using a no relational database so theoretically it has no relationships. But if you need this ID for any purpose you can use that. Okay, next step, update. The update is used to update attributes of existing documents in the collection, but it's very nice this update method because it's different than the update for the SQL technology because SQL is used for database that has a hard structure. So the update here could not only update existing values but create new attributes because each document here in this case all of them have the same attributes but each document could have a different type of attributes they don't need to be equal 
So why it's, it's nice? Because when we use the, the update method, in this case, update one, what we do? Uh, we form two parameters. First, the carry object with the criteria of which object you want to update. And then we inform also one another object with the attributes that are going to be updated or inserted. So if the, the document that match the criteria of carry already has the attribute, it will be updated. If it does not have the attribute, it means if this object here does not have the up updated on, it uh, will be created. So the update is, uh, instruction includes new attributes in the document. So it's very, very interesting feature. So then this is the update one. We will find one document that met this carry criteria and update with the values informed here in this object. Um, we have the update one and we have also the update many that has the same interface carry object and the new values, but, but it will um, update all documents that match this criteria. Okay, so here we have updated the, um, the release our objects again. Now with this timestamp we have created here. And you, you can observe that in this update menu, we have included here, here a carry object that you take our object that has the name different than Adrian. That's different than the object we have just inserted before. So just Adrian has, was updated before all other objects were updated together at the same moment. You can see here the difference in the values. So it's nice because we can include or exclude documents that will be updated using the carry object. Okay, we are almost there. And now the last instruction of this video, the delete, the last letter of crude. So we have the delete one or delete many and the interface of this delete one or delete many is the same interface of find. It receives a carry object and all documents that match the criteria we inform in the carry object will be deleted. So in the same way we had analyzed the insert operation, we are going to print before the operation how many documents there was in the collection and how many documents has the collection after the deletion. So we delete only the object which name is address. So before we have five documents and after we have four documents and then we print out four documents and we can see that one object was deleted. So it's this video give to you instructions about how to perform the crude operation interacting Python and MongoDB, which are two great technologies, especially for handling with big data and situations which we need to deal with a large amount of data. Thank you for watching.